Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey, Internet, today's June 17th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, current, and those still to come. saying like wow look at the graphics i never thought it would mount to anything he informs us they want to pay this 30 million dollars it was like what video games vastly differ from every other kind of media a good video game is probably the hardest thing to make. The whole point of the game was literally shooting pixelated aliens that were falling out of the sky. Nowadays, not only do we know yep, why yep, those aliens yep. are falling out of the sky, we know the names of their All right, moms. From Pittsburgh. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. There you go. Go ahead. Hey, live from Pittsburgh. I am Malango, the host of uh, Rambling Movie Minute. Also from Pittsburgh, we got Sorg. How's it going, Sorg? What's up? Watch some movies this weekend. Having a good time. Ready to talk. Uh, I got some. I, I got some thoughts on some of the news here this weekend, and How to Train Dragon Two as well. Nice, nice. And we got Mad Mike. How's it going? Excuse my appearance, dear internet. I am very sunburnt right now, and you can't tell, but I'm wearing an ice pack, and I'm not going to tell you where. Ooh, ice pack. It's my shoulders. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to like. While I, I I know last week in the movie feed, I kept doing a lot of this. I'm gonna try not to do that. I'm gonna try. It. it gets very blurry when you do that. Do a uh, kindergarten sure. style. S- sit on my hands. Hey, so we we just saw the trailer from uh, literally uh, the video game, the movie. Uh, it's a documentary coming out uh, July 18th in the United States and Canada, and two digital platforms july 15th basically a pretty cool documentary um chronologically uh, i can't speak chronically talking about yes video games um from everything from atari to xbox if you like video games um, and if you don't like video games you just like documentaries i'm pretty excited about this i heard about it a couple months ago actually i think i heard about this like a year ago so i'm pretty pumped um, and as you saw in that trailer, there are a lot of big names, uh, people that they interviewed for this uh, anyway. Yeah, so. for those on audio, there's like, of course, Zach Braff was on there, uh, Will Wheaton, or Will Wheaton. Um, and, uh, I uh, saw Chris Hardwick, Allison Hayslip. Mm-hmm. Basically, anyone that you remember seeing on G4 is probably in this movie. Yeah, yeah. that's probably right. That's probably right. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it it goes very deep into, like, uh, what makes a video game now, which I think is a discussion that I know I went to a lecture at CMU on maybe, like, six years ago, and I feel like it's a discussion that keeps going on, like, what makes a good video game and the complexity of video games. So I'm very pumped to see this movie. But uh, moving on, this week in box office, we had... Uh, basically, Jonah Hill had his pockets this weekend, right? <laughs> he just got rich. He literally sat back and said, "I don't care. I got stuff for I got stuff for the family, and I got stuff for people that just want to go laugh." And basically, he just got rich. Uh, but I would say I I don't know. Okay, so basically, the box office scores went as so: How the Train Your Dragon pulled in. Roughly just shy of like 50 million, and 22 Jump Street pulled in about 60 million. Third movie up, uh, which Mad Mike did uh, claim to, which I, again was correct, was uh, <laughs> Maleficent. Edge of Tomorrow lost about 45% of its revenue from last week. Wow. So, I mean, I. 
all I can tell you that is that sucks for Tom Cruise. He actually put out a good movie, and um, just that's that's the industry. Like, you never know what's going to make a flop and what's going to be a hit. And, and, and the thing is, and, and, and you, Mongo, you and I both saw uh, this movie, uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2, and you want everybody to see this thing. It is so good. Yes. Yeah, I uh, we'll talk about it later in the show, but I did my review. And after going into it, knowing, like, um, like where they're taking the story, like, knowing that there will be a third movie, and trying to see, like, how they incorporate the second movie, like, yeah, I, people should see this movie. It's, it's really good. The interesting thing, though, about it coming in second was – um, if you pull up the comparisons on How to Train Your Dragon, the first one, the first one only made $43 million its opening weekend. And it basically made the gross of its like revenue. The whole reason why we have a sequel and a third one was because it made up all of its money over the course of the following weekends just by people talking about it. It didn't hit number one until after the fifth week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, for them, I think they're they're sitting perfect. It and, was, and uh, still, like they got second, at and plus 50. they like the only reason they got second is because Twenty Two Jump Street pulled in the second highest grossing first weekend for an R rated comedy of all time. Yeah, that's yeah. a surprise. Like, yeah, they, like uh, the only the only thing that beat it was the hang was the hangover the hangover sequel. Interesting. Yeah, I know. Like they had like some kind of like groundbreaking numbers on Thursday night, which was like phenomenal for that. I mean, I'm going to go see it tonight, so I'll have a review for that uh, this weekend, but or for next week's show. But yeah, like I give them kudos. There was um there was a an article I was reading on the comparison of the argument being that with Pixar being out of the picture this year. How the Trainer Dragon might be the, the number two, might be like the second best uh, animation that we've had this year. I can't remember what they were comparing it to, because I'm trying to think back of other epic animations we've had. Frozen. Frozen. That was it. Yeah, they were comparing it to Frozen. It's always Frozen, Malengo. <laughs> always Frozen. You just gotta let it go, man. Oh it's man. Like, Frozen is, I think, the fifth highest grossing movie worldwide now. Which Ever. is crazy. I mean, it was funny, but I still I still hold true that you could skip the first, like, 30 minutes until you see a snowman. And, and I still really hold true good. that you don't have a soul. <laughs> that's fine. I agree to disagree on that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so... Going on to news, what's this first story that we have, Mad Mac? Well, um, it's about a month before Comic-Con, and that's generally when we get news about uh, big comic book movies. And it looks like DC's movie plans might have been leaked. Now, um, of course, this is all non-confirmed. None of this is confirmed except for Batman versus Superman Justice League. But... It turns out DC, if this is accurate, wants to release three movies a year in starting in 2016. And the schedule looks like Batman vs. Superman in May 2016, which we know is happening. Uh, you got Shazam in July 2016. Sandman in uh, around the holiday for 2016. Then in May 2017, you have Justice League. In July 2017, you have Wonder Woman. Christmas 2017, a Green Lantern and Flash team-up movie, and in May 2018, you get a proper sequel to Man of Steel. I, I have so many problems with this. So initially when you posted this, um, I, I did not even look at the dates. I literally just ran down the list of movies. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know about this, I don't know about that. Now looking at it, three movies a year is extremely ambitious. And that does not hold me – gives me no confidence that – I mean Mar Marvel isn't even doing three movies a year. They're, they're holding solid with two because last year we got Iron Man 3 and Thor 2. This year we get Cap 2 and Guardians. 
I think it's overly ambitious. It is Warner Brothers. Uh, so it's like, hey, they're big enough. They could pull us off. But it's also, hey, they're Warner Brothers, and they'll probably mess it up. <laughs> so how, do you, how do you coordinate this? Do you have different directors that all just sit in a room with a think tank? Uh, and say, well, okay. well, so is Marvel. You know, uh, it, Somebody has to head it up. And they coordinate between all the movies, uh, just like they do with Marvel, I'm sure. They're taking everything. They're probably listening to every Marvel Studios Kevin Fenny, Fe- Feige uh, 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 interview and uh, talking about how they did what they did. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe they're even talking to them. Maybe they're good buddies with them over there in Hollywood, right? Um, and they're going to take a shot at it. Um, I can't But it, see it's it. funny. Like, like, some of these movies, you don't even know if they're going to be within the same universe. Like Sandman is is that's being weird. developed by Joseph Gordon Levitt, mm-hmm. so I think that's gonna be like an outside the DC movie universe. Mm-hmm. But it has Shazam, to Shazam seems like it would be in the movie universe, and that just seems odd to me because there's been no announcement of any kind of Billy Batson casting or anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. um. There's been no announcement of anything like like the, there are talks of there are talks of the Rock being in there. Maybe it's Black Adam, but um, not sure. And, and it's early. Like I, I think it's early. They're saying 2016. We're just getting details on on the 2016 Man of Steel, uh, or I guess it's or Superman, Batman, not Man of Steel two. I guess. Um, I could see this. I don't know. Sorry, hold on. I have to go answer my door for a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but no, I can see this. I don't know. They don't have a track record. Uh, and this could this could go horrible. This could go fine. This could be be all over the map. You know, I, I yeah. think I think one thing when you look at Marvel movies, I feel like there's a level of quality that's been consistent across all of them. Um, yeah. Like I don't like we haven't gone you know, through all these character movies and say, ah, you know, I could have done without that one. You know, um, but I feel like they're all conclusive. They're all um, varying on the same style. Still the same universe. It makes sense. Um, and I just can't, I don't know. It just, there's nothing well, in DC's universe that yeah. assures me this is going to go okay. Well, the one thing I was also going to, comment on it's just what happens if let's say shazam is a flop Mm -hmm. by having Uh, forget forget that what happens if batman versus superman gets crushed by cap three yeah that's true because batman versus superman you're supposedly introducing wonder woman Hmm. supposedly like she's gonna be in she's been cast and everything but like you need to like what if people don't like Ben Affleck as Batman? What if the story sucks? Like, <laughs> there's a lot of things up in the air. Like, like any of these could turn into the last Green Lantern movie. Any of these. Yep. In the long run. Or they could turn into Man of Steel, which still was not very, like, if Man of Steel was supposed to be the beginning, like their Iron Man, they fell way short. Mm-hmm. Because Iron Man was the star of the Marvel Universe, and everyone pretty much renounced Iron Man as being a great jumping-off point. Yeah. Man of Steel has a lot of detractors, still because Superman destroyed Metropolis. <laughs> it's true. He can't, like, yeah. Very it, much so. It needs to set the tone, and you set the tone starting with the most powerful thing, you know, um, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still iffy on this. Uh, we'll I think see. I, not to mention, like, what if the Flash TV show bombs? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Is it even going to be the same Flash? Like, is there's there an alternate universe? Or not different alternate universe. But I mean, like, television and, and TV, or television and movies, mm-hmm. there's some leniency. I feel in... like there's, I feel confident that there's going to be no crossover between the, the TV and the movie versions of any of these characters. Well, but, ah. Oh. And that bothers me so much more because if you it's like it's like when you were saying Sorg mm-hmm. before we started, they did Superman Returns at the same time Smallville was on. Like if you're have if you're gonna have a Flash and Green Lantern team up movie, when Flash the TV show is in its let's say 2017, 
it being its third or fourth season by then, and they're not going to be the same guy. Granted, there's a whole bunch of flashes to choose from, but still, that seems odd. And it doesn't seem like it's a very effective strategy. Like, it took a while for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to really work into the Marvel Universe, but yeah. as soon as wow. Winter Soldier hit, boom. And I think boom. that, and I think that, and, and, and I was going to uh, help back from telling you this one thing pre show, but I know. I think the general population has a problem with understanding that these are different universes. And I'm not talking about like the co- the, the 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 comic book guys out there like nitpicking like Spider-Man never did that in the book I read, but but even more so, I think the general person that has seen a um, you know, again, like my wife saying, uh, what, where's where's Mary Jane? Why haven't I seen Mary Jane in these Spider-Man movies, right? Um, I don't understand. You know, they didn't do, they didn't do that with Superman before, you know, in whatever iteration that they saw before, be it the uh, black and white Superman from before, be it the you know uh, cartoon from whatever decade. Um, people don't can't escape from the idea that these are different universes as a population. So if you're if they are watching uh, Green Arrow and Flash every week on the CW and you get these, I think people will reject that a little bit. Be like, that's not that's not like that's not my Flash, you know. Um, and, and kind of push off with that. I think you saw that a little bit with Superman Returns. Maybe that was part of the reason. Other than it was just not a good movie. Um, Wait, are you saying that they should have made Smallville into a movie? Because of course they should have. Yes. They spent, they spent 10 years doing a backstory for Clark Kent. And then as Smallville is going off the air, they announced Man of Steel, and they cast someone completely different, changed the storyline, Ruin like have Jonathan Kent say it's okay to let people die, kids mind you, it, it's just ah, uh. and especially when you have a comic book series, Smallville season eleven, that is mind blowingly good, that introduced Batman very organically, that introduced Wonder Woman very organically, that already had a Green Arrow. They had the template for the DC movie universe, and that's Smallville season eleven, the comic. And I think still we're still in that era. era uh, I, I think maybe a little bit, just like uh, they wouldn't hire comic book people to do the comic book movies because they're movies. Um, yeah, I think that, maybe, that really backfired on Marvel, didn't it? Yeah, I know, right? Um, I, I feel like there might be a little bit of like uh, the movie division doesn't want to bring the TV people in, you know. Um, I, I think, I think this is, this is whatever infighting goes on in the background. This is, this is all, you know, the backstage drama that we don't see, uh, is the right, why the things that don't, I mean, Hollywood should prove that things that make sense aren't the things that happen Mm -hmm. first and foremost, (laughs) unless unless you're Marvel, unless you're Marvel, unless Marvel Marvel. Marvel says we're going to do this our own damn selves and we're going to do it our way. And we're going to shape things so we can do it that way. Like, I thought it was astonishing at first when Marvel said, hey, um, we're going to do these movies, and we're going to link together. And, uh, yeah, Paramount's doing some of them. Universal's doing the Hulk movie. But still, it's going to be our studio. You know, I, I thought that was a very powerful thing. So, And not only – Marvel said they were going to do it without their two biggest characters at the time. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man and Wolverine. They didn't have the rights to either of them. They said, you know what? That's like, screw it. We're doing this anyway. That'd be like DC doing a cinematic universe without Batman or Superman. It's exactly what that is. Um, which I think, And I'd almost rather see that. I would too, because I think that lets you be a little more creative. You know? Yep. And you get something like we did with the 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 Iron Man uh, Captain America Avengers series. So, Like, I, I'd almost prefer them to keep the Batman vs. Superman movie separate and have Shazam start off the Justice League trope. Yep. Because you have a Superman stand-in, you have Shazam, who's an interesting character, he has a good villain, like... And then you can bring in Arrow and Flash from the TV show. You can bring back Ryan Reynolds, and you can pair him with another Green Lantern. Yeah, and expand it out, sure. But again, it's like, oh, you didn't have a good box office, Ryan Reynolds. You're not touching Green Lantern again. That's how they think. It doesn't matter. Um, all right, uh, we need to move on to another story here. Uh, WB is going to reboot Scooby Doo in film. Well, how about we? How about we swap and just 
continue into since we've been talking about the Marvel and DC movie universe. Okay. Uh, how do you guys feel about Mark Rothia talking about uh, Marvel considering the Hulk solo? Good. Yes. Good. It needs yes. to be because I, I I think everybody really enjoyed this version of Hulk across the board. Um, I still hold the original Incredible Hulk, not not Hulk, not that horrible one from ten years ago with Eric Bana. Um, You're talking about the Edward Norton. I'm talking about the Edward Norton one. I still enjoy that. Uh, I, agree. I can accept that we've swapped who plays him. That's fine by me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to see it. I, I definitely love to see it, especially with this version of Hulk. And especially if they have Tony Stark cameos like this article is suggesting. Yeah. My my one thing, though, is we've already seen two revamps of the Hulk. So I don't want to see... I mean, I'm okay with a re... I'm okay introducing a new character as the Hulk and then giving him his own movie. I don't want to see another origin story, is what I'm saying. And I don't I think don't, you will. I, I don't think you would either, because the, the Hulk origin story has been done to death, and Marvel does learn from its mistakes. They even learn from their mistake in The Incredible Hulk, where they didn't have an origin story. Mm-hmm. It was just the opening credits. Like had a, it was like, It's like if you pick up a comic book and you read the first page, and the first page of a Marvel book says, previously in this book. And, and really, it it, and I thought rundown. it was smart, because when, when you watch that, uh, that version of Incredible Hulk, the original Hulk could have still existed, I feel. Mm-hmm. For the most oh, part. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, more. I mean, they basically redid shots from Ang Lee's Hulk. Yeah. With, with Edward Norton sitting in the chair. Yeah. Like, it it was fine. Like it was it was a perfect way to do the origin. Say, hey, look, um, same Hulk. We just have a different dude playing Bruce Banner now. Like, yeah, and this is they can't go back to the origin because this is going to be in the timeline leading up to what Avengers three or something. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's wherever wherever Hulk's going to be after Avengers two. We're going to pick up from there. I mean, we already see him cameo in uh, the last Iron Man movie. Uh, and plus, yeah. they they have a good template. Like they have a cartoon, Hulk and the Agents of Smash. You can bring any of those characters in for a Hulk for a Hulk movie. You could bring in She Hulk, and that would be really interesting. We could do a Red Hulk movie. Oh, I would love a Red Hulk. You do movie. a Red Hulk movie. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I think they kind of teased one of the char- one of the guys becoming a certain character at the end. The leader. Of- yeah, the leader there at the end of Incredible Hulk. Uh, we could, they could just pick up with that. So yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, yes, like you said, Mike, they are thinking about doing a Scooby Doo. Ten years after the last live action, uh, they're thinking about bringing it back. They already have a screenwriter on board, Randall Green. Um, yeah, and they're they're saying they're not even going to. They're not thinking about bringing back uh, the other, all the actors, Freddie Prince Jr., uh, Mich- uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar. They're not thinking about bringing those characters no, back. No, because they're they're not they're not cool anymore. You know, I mean, you got to go with whoever's yeah. kind of in right now. And plus, uh, they're still putting out. There was a Scooby Doo cartoon they they rebooted a few years ago, I think. Um, oh. The DVDs have been doing fantastic. I, 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 really, they have. I, I, they've been. They I still do, do, do want to mention. On the Scooby Doo cartoon, Matthew Lillard is voicing Shaggy, hmm. mm-hmm. and he was the actor who played Shaggy in the original movie. And in the DVDs too. In the DVDs too. Yeah. So it's still. So maybe, I, I think it's still strong. I think a new generation of kids are 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 finding it. So yeah. why not? Because that's what I was going to say. Maybe it's just not relevant to me, but I feel like Scooby Doo is outdated. But then again, I would definitely go see a Ghostbusters. And after seeing the trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that came out, like the newest one, I'm actually now more interested in that. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I'm in, man. I, I went and saw the original the first weekend. Come on, I am in. It was just. Oh, enough. I'm going. I'm going to see it. I'm not going to be happy about it. So yeah. I, I probably agree with you, Mad Mike. I'll probably be very disappointed, but <laughs> I think I want to be way happier with Transformers than I I have been with trans or, uh, with with Turtles uh, than I have been with Transformers. That's probably hey, you know, also I think true. You just found a Transformer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just found a turtle. Every, every time you mention that movie, I'm going to do my Mark Wahlberg. Oh, the thing is, effect. everybody talks like that in New York City in the Turtles universe, apparently. 
I feel of like course. every movie Mark Wahlberg plays in, they should they should just automatically like write in how he knows how to use all of these weapons like perfectly. Because all all the roles that he plays, military, they should all just cross over. Like, oh yeah. I played a military guy in this movie, so this is how it's, I now know how to use this. Is, and uh, and how there's never any foil for guns. It's so, so funny, because let's we'll, we'll see the last two movies I've seen them when were uh, uh, Pain and Gain, and I watched Ted again this weekend. So <laughs> this, is, this is hilarious to me. So, yeah. yeah. I like them in Ted, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, this weekend through now. This is going to be, I'm not, I don't know. I want to call this weekend a wash. We have Think Like a Man and Jersey Boys. Uh, Jersey Boys, um, written, oh, Clint Eastwood, uh, is the one who's bringing us Jersey Boys. So, just with that, you know, cinematography and story, it's probably going to be a really good movie. It just, when it just comes to, like, musical act, uh, adapt thing into... Ad- adaptation. Yes, onto theater. I don't know, I'm kind of... Like, Newsies, I like seeing Newsies as a movie and there have been a lot like to be clear i want to see book of mormon as a movie i, I, and I'm sure, I want to see and i'm sure you're looking for, forward to the new annie movie no i'm not <laughs> really that looks no. nice i'm that looks like a good no movie. that that looks very good that looks yeah. very good i'm i'm okay with annie i i don't know jamie fox in that is just i feel like they're really making punch jokes and it's coming out on christmas which means it's going to be sappy and kid friendly, which is what Annie and was doing. And it's going to make huge bank. <laughs> yeah, it'll it's make gonna ridiculous make money. Huge bank. The sun will come out tomorrow, and it will be the color of money. Yeah, they so, I'm agreed. sorry. I, I no, no, no. You, you know what's going to happen with Annie? It's the perfect storm, I think, because uh, you know the the people out there, like my mother. Right, and the grandmas and the blue hairs are like, I remember Annie. I don't remember it like this, but I remember Annie. And I think they're just gonna go in blind, and say, "Oh, it's Annie." Okay, I want to go see Annie. And then I think your, uh, you know, we've been talking on the show about uh, uh, how how the black people are going to the movies, and that's been propping a lot of stuff up. I think you're just gonna mix the two of those things together, and it's Christmas, wow. and it's just it's gonna like explode. Story. It's going to be a ridiculous. Uh, I think it's going to be the best box office uh, the Christmas season has seen. What's the top like Christmas season box office? Probably Harry Potter or something. Maybe Lord of the Rings. Um, I think it's actually Sherlock Holmes. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Oh, I think I think, I, I think it's going to blow that up. I think it's going to blow all that up. I'm calling it right now. That's interesting. You're going to get oh, sick yeah. of seeing it in the meantime. By the way, you're going to be sick of that mm-hmm. Batman joke. This so there you go. <laughs> uh, anyways, what else we got going on, Malengo? Uh, so yeah, those those are the two movies. So between those two, like I said, uh, I don't know. I, that one's to throw. Up. I'm gonna go see Chef this weekend. So I think that'll just null that. Uh, but yeah, so let's move on to what we watched. Also, um, I, I have not seen Think Like a Man one. Um, yeah. I, will, I will not see Think Like a Man two. <laughs> I I. If you want to see a movie this weekend that is a sequel, Think Like a Man 2 should probably be eighth on your list. Yeah. Eighth. I, was I, can't like even, I can't even count the seven movies that will be higher than it because some of them would be watching Captain America 2 twice. <laughs> it just I mean, I so might go see Crazy Jack Sparrow. Over that, no, that's just craziness. Uh, what did we watch this weekend? I saw How to Train Your Dragon too. As did I, Malengo, and it was I wonderful. It was amazing. Um, uh, it was uh, it it hit all the right notes. Although I yeah. think I think kids got bored towards the sad parts. At least the kid directly um, behind me that wouldn't shut up did. Yeah, <laughs> like um, like. Sadly enough, my comic review, I mean, it was, it was, well, the comic review doesn't really review comics. It's more just my crazy ideas of what I thought. Uh, but in hindsight, I think, yes, I agree with you. It hit a lot of good points. As a second sequel movie, I think it did really well. It was very nicely shot, very spectacular, and I feel like if you're going to bring your kids to this movie, be prepared to answer a lot of deep depressing questions like mommy what happened to that guy oh geez 
<laughs> okay, so mental note, bring tissues when I go see this. A well. little bit, a little uh, bit. Especially if you tissues. really, really like the characters from the first one. Oh. Damn it, Sorg. <laughs> God damn you, Sorg. I mean, um, I, I, have I, mean I have a question for either of you. Okay. Did yes. either of you see it in 3D? No. Uh, okay, here, here's my thing. When it comes to animated features, I those are the only ones that I would recommend in 3D if it was like if it has that potential. I saying that I did not go see it in 3D, but I think if I did, if I had the money, I would have gone to. So and okay. also one one thing I heard was and I think you heard the same thing, Malengo, um, was to not see the previews if at all possible going into this. And now I'm looking at this preview a little more in depth. I'm really glad I didn't see the previews. Yeah, because I, I had no idea who the one person was going to be when they showed up, and and I didn't know that this was what's going to happen. Actually, it almost got me because we were up late after a, a show we were working the night before, and that really bad like like three in the morning uh uh what's playing in the movies show that's always yeah. on uh i was playing and they were do they were talking to everybody on, on how to train dragon i just tuned it out all i know is, is this is going to be a trilogy and that's the only thing that stuck in my head uh and i'm really glad i did it, it, this is one now, of those really nice to go blind I, into i um saw a review i didn't read it because i didn't want to spoil myself um i've heard this is the dark knight of animated dragon movies is that accurate Yes. I almost okay. thought there was a point that I almost thought it was going to be Empire Strikes Back of animated movies. Uh, oh, dragon oh, movies. Okay. Like, like it almost went there. Uh, like, are we ending at this point? Because I don't know how that crap you're coming <laughs> so back from this point. Like, Mario, did you get that That's feeling? Because awesome. I'm just like, I'm like, how are we getting, like, are we finishing this movie or are we just going to wait a couple years? Because there's going to be a lot of kids crying for like three years. Well, so, because so they, sword, ended on a, they ended up on a high. They did, they did, but there was a really big low, and I thought that was going to be the end of the movie. Yeah, no. Because they mean, did something really big before that. I'm like, they just, wait, does, is that the movie? Toothless is that it? Lose a hand? What's that? Does, does Toothless lose a hand? <laughs> oh, um, I, 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 based I'm on the way they, Based on the way they set up the structure, though, Mike, it's like, um, like sort of, we know the third movie is going to be adulthood, and it's almost going to be like the Lion King effect. Yeah, We're yeah. going to see a baby hiccup. Like, oh I gosh, oh, you know, it probably is. It probably fun. is. It's, it's going to be. I, I I don't want to spoil, but you're exactly right. Because what happened? Because mm hmm happened. Therefore, mm -hmm has to mm hmm, <laughs> and then he has to be in the same place as mm hmm to deal with being mm hmm. Yeah. Who also has to grow up and be mm hmm. Yes. Right? You oh, know where I'm man. at. We're There's in the right a lot place. Of going on. <laughs> There's a lot of mm hmm going on. There's a lot of if, mm hmm going on a, in this, yes. If you want to do a spoiler discussion, I, I, I will. I will we'll hold stop off. Well, you're, you're definitely seeing it this week, and we'll hold off on the spoilers until next week. Yeah. Uh, it looks okay. like a lot of people, according to the box office, still need to see it. I'm hoping everybody in the chat room sees it. I definitely, highly, highly recommend this movie. Uh,. Also, real quick, um, I saw. Oh, so Mike, um, yeah, you saying you recommended? I said I recommended. I think I gave it like a four out of five, um, but that's me being weird and picky. Uh, I also saw Blended, the Adam Sandler and. Oh, uh, why did you do that to yourself? Yeah, well, I didn't see it in the theater. You could have gone and go see a Kevin Hart movie instead. Oh. No, <laughs> come on. Hey, my stomach just started. I oh. hope. <laughs> no, I have to. I have to support black actors. Black actors. Black actors. Um. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Are they ironic black actors or are they fake black actors? I don't know what the intention is. Uh, I, I thought you were quoting the Chappelle show where he did black actors, man. Black actors. <laughs> and so, like, here's the thing: like, I don't hate Kevin Hart. At some point, though, something happened where I just stopped caring. I think it's just his persona. But anyway, blended. I have to defend Adam Sandler. At first, the first couple of jokes, I was like, "Oh, he's really making this movie again," and it did horrible in theaters. Obviously, it failed, and I was like, "He should go back to just serious movies and end his career." 
But I will say this movie isn't as bad as it probably went on. It does have a lot of like Adam Sandler type comedy from back in those back so, in the day. So poop and vomit jokes. No, actually, see, the thing is, like, it's not poop and vomit jokes. It's more like he's trying to be, like, a serious, like, family-type guy in that type of genre. Like, making it real, but with comedy. So, like, I don't know. It's, it's not bad. Obviously, I wouldn't say go see it in theaters. So I don't even think it's in theaters. But I would elevate this above Netflix. I would actually say go pick it up at a Redbox when it comes out. Yeah, it's not it's not the worst movie in the world. For a dollar, I might sit through it. <laughs> That's a great review. <laughs> it's not the worst movie in the world. <laughs> uh, man, Mike, what'd you see? And Escape from Tomorrow. I saw Escape from Tomorrow. It's a movie I've wanted to see for a little while. It's a horror question mark. It's, a, it's kind of it's kind of a thriller movie, like a psychological thriller, that yeah. was shot at Disneyland. Oh wow! It was oh. shot at Disney World, um, Disney World in Orlando, not Disneyland in California. But um, oh, it, it's all in black and white. It's all in black and white, so that may throw some people. But it's about this family, and the father is slowly losing his mind. Which, he's, his slowly moves, losing his mind moment starts within the It's a Small World ride, which I can totally understand. Because, god damn it, do I hate that ride. But, um, it's on Netflix, so as long as you have Netflix, you can watch it for free. It's about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. It's a really, really weird movie, but it was a fun watch. Huh. It, and it's really weird. Like, it if you take a lot of the stuff that happens in Di- like in Disney World rides, and then show it in black and white, it looks downright horrifying. <laughs> it looks really, really horrifying. Is it? Um, does it make any sense? Uh, and actually, edu- you say this is on Netflix? Oh, Escape from Tomorrow. I'm, I'm, it I'm is, it is on. It is on Netflix. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you, is it helpful to have gone to? Uh, 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 Disney, Disney World? World to know what the heck uh, is going on. No, no, you don't have to have gone to Disney World. <laughs> I love that. Like, the, I, mean, I love that the poster you, is a bloody Mickey that. hand. Yep. Yeah. Wasn't this? Uh-huh. This is not like this is not authorized by Disney, right? Not even remotely. They did this like like gorilla style, right? Yeah, you can tell it's shot with a lot of GoPro stuff. Wow, that's like, funny. It's, it's and it's actually shot very well, like. The big set pieces and stuff like that, they have a hotel. They have a hotel in one of the, I believe it's the Disney Polynesian Resort because the monorail goes to it. But um, it's really, like, that's where a lot of the big set pieces are done. But they take the cameras on rides, and I'm just curious how they did it. But it's a really interesting movie. Wow. Really interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rotten Tomato does not like this movie. Well, so, I mean, it, it's very weird. It's yeah. very, very weird. But if you if you want, if you're like looking on Netflix just for something to kill two hours and just interested, like want to watch an interesting movie, definitely a watch. Drama, horror, mystery, suspense, science fiction, and fantasy. Yep, that sounds about accurate. <laughs> that nice. sounds about accurate. Um, sword. You you rewatched Ted. I rewatched Ted with the wife. The wife had not seen it, and I saw it at like two in the morning at a Chachi Plays last year, I think. Um, so I uh, I I was watching some stuff while I was doing some work uh, in the office last week. I dove into some, a little bit of Netflix. I was throwing on Machete, and I didn't realize that it was the sequel I was watching on Netflix. Uh, Machete Kills, uh, which was amazing. I, I think Mike, you you were you the one that was pointing it over to me about uh, Machete yeah. Kills in Space. Yeah, Machete Kills. Again. It's worth it if you love this schlock movie uh, stuff. It's uh, it, it, it's tremendous. Mel Gibson is hilarious in this thing. Um, it, it's great. And uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, is it 
Is this one the robot in Frank? Or Frank and the robot? Frank and the robot? Robot and Frank. I've, yeah. I've never heard of it. It's with uh, it. uh, Frank Langella. Um, robot and Frank is the name of it. It's on Netflix as well. Um, he is a retired jewel thief. He served time, everything like that. His son is actually uh, the guy who plays Cyclops, actually. Uh, Lip Tyler's in it as well uh, as, as his daughter. Um, and they give him, this is in the, in the near future, and uh, robots are... You know, they give him a robot to help with his uh, his health care, basically his home care, since he's since he's older. Uh, you know, the help with the gardening and everything, uh, and he starts teaching the robot how to uh, be an accomplice on his crimes because he just wants to get back into the game. Um, oh, I totally remember this. This is I a good movie. It. Is this on Netflix? This is on Netflix right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Looks very. I remember when this trailer came out. Like I feel like it came out like two years ago. Mm -hmm. They uh, people were like freaking out because they're like, "This is so weird," and then you heard nothing about it. I don't think it released in theaters. Well, I think it. I think it might have released in theaters. I, I seem to remember like remember the trailers and everything. Um, but I, I, you know, this might be only about a year old now. I think about it. Um, it might have just but, been but like. But this is one of those. Release. This is what you expect. One of those, Mike. You you remember. Uh, those weird Samuel Golden Company uh, indie movies that WWE did for a while. This is one oh, of yeah. those. You, th this okay. is slow plotting. There's more to it. Kind of flicks. It's not an action movie. You know, uh, you shouldn't be watching it because there's a robot. The robot is is simply, you know, part of the story. You know. Um, now, Sorg, I have a very important question. Mm-hmm. Could this robot be used to replace Bernie Mac so they can make an Ocean's 14? <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. This could happen. Oh, man. This could happen. <laughs> Perfect. So that's what I watched this week. Um, I also forgot to add, I watched a documentary on Netflix, Drew, the man behind the poster. All of the iconic freaking posters from our 80s, this guy drew amazing documentary so go check it out everything from the star wars to indiana jones he did them all it's crazy amazing artist all right but with that uh we will start to head out yeah we're gonna go so where can we find you guys Mad mike well i am mad mike 4883 on the twitters and i will argue about kevin hart all day yeah. i even boycotted his segment on raw <laughs> so, so the struggle is real with kevin hart um and you can also find me on the wrestling mayhem show at sorgatronmedia.com there you go Nice sword. Uh, at Sorgatron on Twitter's uh, SorgatronMedia.com, MikeSorg.com to go everywhere where I am, um, and some places that I forgot that I go. Uh, all that kind of stuff. All the podcasts also cast this uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, Indie Mayhem Show that we do here uh, every Tuesday. Cool, and you can find me at Rambling Mango on Twitter. Also, uh, we do a comic review, or I do a comic review on uh, the Rambling Mango. And also, make sure you join our Facebook page or our group on the Rambling Movie Minute Facebook page. So, that is it. I uh, hope everybody goes and watches an awesome movie this weekend. And, well, not this weekend, honestly. Still, see movies, talk about them, and we will see you guys next week.